obesity has become a big problem for a lot of us. And today we'll talk about how to help your overweight child lose weight. Obesity, being overweight, huge problems, and it's hitting our kids too. In order to help our kids the best, we're starting with a place that's going to completely shock and surprise you if you know me at all. I want you to focus on your job. As a parent, what is your job? To love them, no matter what, and even if. Okay, connect with that for a moment. Now, I also want you to review, if you haven't recently reviewed it, there's a video, you can link to it right up here. Click on that and it'll queue it up so that you can watch it next. For the Influence Quadrant. Now, this is a model that I shared with you before about how our focus matters. And if we're focused on ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, then we're not in a position to help our children the best. Our focus really needs to be away from us and on them. How do they feel about themselves? See, it's not about me. How I feel is only secondary. So if you haven't reviewed that in a while, please go to that video and check in with that particular process because that's all prerequisite to what I'm going to share with you. If you lose track of your job as a parent to love them, no matter what and even if, then everything that I share with you is simply manipulation. Come from that place and that, the green quadrant as we talked about it in the influence quadrant and then we're in a position to really help our kids. So that's all the preliminary stuff. Let's get into the weight thing specifically. Your kids are going to watch and model after what you do. Okay, I know that stings a little bit. Let it sink in because sometimes what we say is completely lost in what we're doing. And as we talk about weight, for example, weight is only one measurement that we can do on our bodies to see how we're doing health-wise. It tends to be a fairly accurate indicator of a number of things, and there's a lot of reasons why kids might be overweight. The, the research is extremely consistent on this point, and you'll know this from your own experience. There are two things, two reasonable things that you can do to lose weight. Now, what are they? Yeah, you know, don't you? Exercise and diet. Now, let's talk about both of those for a minute, especially as it relates to our kids. Diet is simply defined as what we eat. Okay, this is the energy and the food and the fuel that's coming in. Diet does not mean restriction. You could take your kids to the zoo sometime. You know the little placards that they have on the wall there in each of the animal enclosures and it says spotted leopard diet rodents or whatever, right? I don't know if that's even what spotted leopards eat. But diet means what you eat. It doesn't mean restriction. And restricting is not a surefire way to lose weight. I think it's very unhealthy, for example, to say something to your child like, I'm going on a diet. Well, why would that not be helpful? Because it calls attention to the wrong focus, I think. It would be better to say, let's eat healthy food. Let's put good fuel through our body. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not here to, to lecture you about that. But connect with this, this concept that weight gain or weight loss is tied to calories in and calories out. It's a math equation at that point. Now, are there psychological components? Yes, we're gonna to get to a few of those in just a second. But notice that it's, it's calories in, calories out. Calories in has to do with your diet. Calories out has to do with your activity level. That's why diet and exercise are the only two legitimate weight loss strategies on the planet. Now, there's other things that people will try to sell you, supplements or whatever, that, well, that contributes to your diet. But don't buy into the magic bullet idea. Diet and exercise, that's what we're talking about. Now, we've talked a little bit about diet. 
Make sure that the food you're making available to your kids is of the kind that will support your goal in being fit and healthy. And incidentally, let's change the focus because psychologically, losing weight carries a lot of connotations to it. First of all, from a psychological perspective, if you lose something, you go into scarcity mode and it's like, oh, I lost something, where is it? And your mind wants to find it. So instead of focusing on losing weight, let's focus on what it is that we want, like being fit and healthy and energetic and looking and feeling good, okay? Does that sound a little better to you? So we change the culture around this conversation, at least at home, to something that's much more positive and that's going to support some of the behavioral changes. Diet also implies a lifestyle change. Remember, diet isn't restriction, diet is what you eat. Could we approach this in a way that instead of having our kids feeling restricted or depleted of something, it's simply what we eat and we don't eat certain things that don't serve us well. It's not a restriction. So again, that's kind of the mental side of this and it's a lifestyle change. This implies something for mom and dad too. Because are we gonna put this kid on a special restrictive diet? I don't see that working very well, do you? No, we're going to make lifestyle changes within the family. Now this is going to apply to the exercise part of this too. By exercise, I just mean activity. I have a couple of friends who are amazing physicians and they have consulted with me about this. One in particular shared with me that our activity level triggers different signals in our body. It triggers different things in our metabolism. So just increasing the energy level, even if we don't look at it or call it or define it as exercise, can help this process because it's sending a signal to our body to metabolize those things a little faster and the calories out part of the equation becomes a little more manageable. So a couple of tips that I thought of. How about park farther out? You know, if you go to the store or the library or the zoo, park farther out. Don't look for the closest parking spot. Why? Because you're gonna get out of the car with or without your child. Can I just emphasize that? What if you made this a lifestyle change? Just saying. Okay, so you get out of the car with your child, you're at the grocery store, and you're clear out in the North 40. You walk all the way into that grocery store. You walk around that grocery store, and then you walk all the way back out to your car. You just increase the activity level. What you make available is important. Most kids are, are really drawn into their little electronic games, right? That doesn't give a lot of activity level. Sometimes it's healthy and appropriate to do what I call a media fast. And that's where as a family, you create a culture where, hey, every Thursday afternoon is our media fast. We don't, we don't do electronics or screen time on Thursday afternoons. Okay, well, what do we do then? Well, that's a pretty good question. And if you can encourage your kids to address that question and start coming up with creative answers to it, we just increase the activity level. They're going outside and playing ball or they're doing something with their siblings there in the house. It's more physically oriented. Here's another suggestion. Take the stairs, especially if it's only a flight or two. Take the stairs. That increases the cardiovascular activity that you're doing and it also starts to trigger those signals in your body to metabolize things and we get the calories out going a little better for us. Choose to walk, especially if it's less than a half mile. Can you take your kid with you? Absolutely. In fact, that would be a great idea, but do it without them. Choose to walk when you can. Usually if it's less than a half mile, you're not going to spend a whole lot more time when it comes to driving and parking and all of that stuff too. So choose to walk when you can. Here's another fun one. Most um, people are familiar with the fitness trackers that are out, out there. You know, those little electronic wristbands and things that you can wear that actually track your steps and your activity. 
Well, a lot of these have a social component to it as well. And you could team up to have a little competition for the week. Who can get the most steps? Who can get the most flights of stairs? Kids jump onto this stuff quickly because they're a little competitive to start with anyway. It's just another way to increase the activity level. So there's a few ideas for you. I am not a physician. I'm not a nutritionist. So don't mistake any of this for that kind of advice. I'm coming from a psychological standpoint where you remember your job is to love your kids no matter what and even if. It's not your job to get this weight off. In fact, if we change the culture to instead what we want, frame it in a positive way, and then focus on the two most reliable standbys when it comes to calories in, calories out. We're going to look at diet. We're going to look at exercise. We're going to model that and create lifestyle changes within the family because that's a whole lot easier than imposing it on your child. I think you can get this. Heavy duty science, right? I mean, exercise and diet, we kind of already knew that, but our example as a parent makes a big difference too. I'll see you tomorrow at Live On Purpose TV.